Hello friends, it's Miss Katie, and as we're learning about bugs and insects, today I'm going to read to you about honeybees. Look at that, there's a little honeybee. If you remember, bug, or insects, excuse me, insects have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Can you see that? Head, thorax, and an abdomen. The thorax is the middle part of the bug's body. They have three body segments, a head, number one, a thorax, number two, and an abdomen over here, number three. And it should have six legs, which are going to be kind of hard to see. One, two, three, and on the other side it has four, five, six. And look, the bees have wings. So now we're going to find out about all the amazing things that honeybees can do. Here we go. This is by Jane Letch. Can you make that noise? A honeybee flies low, looking for food. She finds her way to the flowers by following their sweet smell. Mm. Do you like to smell flowers? I like to smell flowers. Then she zooms in for a landing on a pink petal. Here she comes, zoom. There she is. Deep in the flower, the bee finds sweet drops of nectar. With her long tongue, she sips the flower juice and carries it to the hive in her special honey stomach. So here she is sipping with her tongue. She's drinking the nectar. It's pretty cool. Yellow flower dust called pollen sticks to her fuzzy body. The honeybee brushes the pollen grains onto the long hairs in her hind legs. Bees work hard to gather nectar and pollen. Look at that, pretty cool. Loaded with nectar and pollen from the flowers, the honeybee heads straight home in a bee line. The sun guides the honeybee to place to places near home. See the sun up there? That's a picture, a drawing of the sun. She steers towards the hive by remembering how far to the left or right of the sun she must fly. Then she recognizes the plants near the hive. Back in the hive, the bee dances to tell others where she has found food. In one dance, she buzzes and wags her body as she circles to form a figure eight. A figure eight looks like this. She dances like that. It's pretty cool. In bee language, her movements show which way to fly and how far to go. Over and over, she dances. She stops only to let the bees smell the pollen and taste the nectar. Soon, many of the bees will fly out to the flowers. So bees kind of talk, this, not the same way, but in a similar way. The way that you and I talk to each other, we might say, Hi, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Bees talk too. And the way that they talk, they don't use their voices. They dance. They use their bodies. And some people also use their bodies. They talk with their hands in a way called sign language. It's pretty cool. So bees talk to each other too, like humans do, but with a different technique. Oh my goodness, look at all these bees. Thousands of bees live together in a hive. Bees build honeycomb inside of their home out of wax. Here, wax oozes from a bee's underside. You can't really see that very well. It oozes from a bee's underside. Bees chew and pack the wax into rows of tiny rooms called cells that fit together. Each comb has hundreds of cells to store food or cradle baby bees. So do you remember in the ant book, the ants made rooms too? The bees are making teeny tiny little cells which are like little baby rooms for them to be in if they need to. It's kind of interesting. Do we have rooms in our houses? We do. Are you in one right now? Me too. Only a half inch long, the worker bee is the insect that gathers nectar to make the honey we eat. So over here is the worker bee. It's the smallest one. She has six legs. Let's count those. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
four wings. Oh my goodness, I can only see two wings right now, but I bet there's another one underneath. One, two, three, four, wow. And two antenna, here are her antenna up here. One, two. She lives in a very large family or colony. Hey, ants were called colonies too, weren't they? Big ant groups, very cool. With thousands of sister workers, a few hundred brothers called drones. Here's the drone bee. Look at that. He's a little bit bigger than the worker bee. And a few, oh, and one mother bee called the queen. Here she is. She's the biggest one. Can you see how big she is? She's so big. And let's look up here. If you look so closely, it'll show you the different parts of the bee. So here's its head. You can see that. Here's its tongue. It's very long like a straw to drink the nectar. Here is its, an, it has an antenna cleaner, it says. That's pretty crazy. It's got pollen ba ooh, baskets, it says. So it stuffs the pollen into here. Here's a pollen brush to brush the pollen. Here's its stinger. Oh, so here are the antenna. We have the wings up here. And then head, like we said before, thorax and abdomen. Do you notice that this bee has a pattern? It has the AB pattern we looked at. Black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow. Pretty cool. All right, let's see what happens on the next page. Hmm. The queen of the colony has only one big job, to lay eggs to make baby bees. She lays only one egg in a cell a queen hatches upside down. So here, this is a picture of a queen hatching. So the other bees hatch upside right, but a queen, when she hatches, she hatches upside down. Do you see her heads down here instead of coming out the top? Two new queens fight. So these are two new baby queens, and they're fighting to see who's going to have this special spot until only one is left. There can be only one queen to each hive. Workers always gather around the queen to feed her and clean her. See her down here? She's being fed and cleaned. And look, here's the queen bee again. She's so big. Do you notice that she does not have black stripes? It's pretty interesting. I never realized that queen bees don't really have that before. Okay, let's see. Each egg is shaped like a grain of rice. This is the egg, I guess. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, it is, I think. It's shaped like a grain of rice. So these are the eggs. It hatches into a worm-like larva. Here's the larva. Do you remember that the ants turn into larva too? So they start as eggs. The ants start as eggs, and then they turn to larva. Same with the bees. Eggs, larva, like a little worm. And then they become pupa, just like the ants. The larva turns into a pupa, and step by step, it takes the shape of a bee. Two full-grown honeybees, right, ooh, right here, they are a worker and a drone. They're chewing the lids off of their cells, and they're ready to join the colony. They're coming out to say, hey guys, it's time to do our jobs and take care of our family, just like the ants, and kind of just like us, right? We do jobs too. Workers have many different chores in the hive. A bee pushes her tongue into her sister's mouth to take her load of nectar. She stores it in cells where it ripens into thick, sweet honey. One bee is poking her head into a cell. Over here, do you see that? She's poking her head into a cell to lick it clean. Let's see if I can get that closer to you. Shwing, there you go. Look at that, she's licking it out. The next feeds a white larva. Here she is feeding a larva. She's delivering food to the little babies. And two bees over here fan their wings to cool the hive. Down here, a guard bee attacks a stranger to keep him out of the hive. They're trying to protect their special beehive. Hmm. Drones have big eyes to help them see the queen as she flies above the treetops. Drones have only one life work to mate with the queen and help make little eggs. They have an easy life and must be fed by their sisters in the winter. When food becomes scarce, though, the workers push the drones out of the hive. So in the winter, when food is, there's not as much food because the flowers are all gone, they start to push out the drone bees and they have to go somewhere else. Enemies attack bees in the hive and field. A green praying mantis, this is a big bug. It gives me the heebie-jeebies a little bit. 
it has caught a meal. Do you see it's holding onto a bee and it's gonna try to eat the bee? A yellow spider up here has trapped a bee as well. See that? Here's the yellow spider, here's the bee. Bears love honey and will often rob the hive. Sometimes humans are hurtful to bees too. When we spray poison to kill harmful insects, sometimes we also kill the bees. That's sad. Beekeepers carry wooden hives filled with bees to a field. Do you see them carrying those beehives? Look at that. They made boxes for them. These man-made hives have rows of frames inside. The bees build honeycombs in these frames. Beekeepers lift the frames out to harvest the honey. Here's a picture of that happening. See that? He's, he's doing that. Bees sting only when they're angry, but just to be safe, beekeepers cover their faces. So you can see he's got a special hat on, he or she does, and look, there's like a net around there so that you don't get stung in the face. But do you see that the, he trusts the bees so much, this beekeeper, that he's not wearing anything on his arms. He thinks, it's going to be okay. These bees will only sting me if I scare them, and I'm not going to scare them. So over here it says, under a microscope, a stinger shows a spiky barb. The stinger comes out of the worker's body when she wants to defend herself. After she uses her stinger, the bee usually dies. So do you see this? This is a big picture of a stinger. This is what the stinger actually looks like. It just looks like a pointy little needle. But what it looks like under the microscope is it has little barbs. So it can get stuck wherever it stings it. So bees don't really like to use their stingers unless they're really, really afraid. So when you see a bee out in your garden, don't, don't try to hit it because that'll scare the bee. Even if you're scared, you don't want to scare the bee. You go like this and you blow on it. Can you practice that with me? Blow. And that tells the bee, oh, this, this is the wind. And so they often fly away. But if you scream and you throw your hands around, it could scare the bee and you could get stung and that would hurt. Honeycombs hanging in the hive hold delicious honey. Look at that. These are the honeycombs. Honey comes in many flower flavors such as clover and apple blossom. Because beeswax, beeswax burns slowly and gives off a pleasant smell, it makes a fine candle. So here we have a jar of honey. Honey. Fine candle. Beeswax is also used in gum, inks that go in pens and markers, lipstick, and crayons. Did you know that you have beeswax probably all over your house? That's crazy. Bees and flowers are partners. They need each other. Do you see these little bees working hard? As a bee gathers food, they carry pollen from flower to flower. The plant needs pollen to make seeds. Without bees, many fruits and flowers would disappear. Look at that. What is this fruit right here? It's an apple. What is this, do you think? I think it might be a peach. It's hard to tell. This looks like it might be an apricot. This looks like a plum. What are these, do you think? Cherries. <gasps> you can safely watch bees behind glass at a nature center, or you can visit a beekeeper. Look at this beekeeper. He kind of looks like Mr. Adrian, doesn't he? Yeah, but it's not. It's not Mr. Adrian. Or you can also enjoy honey on bread. You can watch the busy bees as they fly from flower to flower. Listen to the buzzing as they find the flowers with sweet nectar. That's the end. Can you buzz like a bee with me? Bees are pretty super helpers, aren't they? Can't wait to figure out what bug we're going to learn about next week. See you soon.